Welcome to another edition of Doctor and the Dude. I am Dr. Jim Siebert, and joining me is Josh Morgerman, as always. Josh, how are you doing today? Real good, real good, Dr. Jim. Good to be back with you. I always look forward to it. This is my favorite, favorite moment of my week. You know, me too, with you. Now, let's talk today. We're going to talk about storm surge which is something we hear a lot about uh, during hurricane season. And again, the definition of storm surge is the water that is pushed by the storm. And as it gets close to shore, it can really build. In fact, we, we always say that you run from the water, you hide from the winds. And so you running from the water because the storm surge is really the deadliest thing. And you've actually had some experience with some very deadly storm surge. Yeah, I mean, some of the worst storm surge events have actually been in the United States, but the worst I've seen was actually in the Philippines. Category 5 Super Typhoon Haiyan. This was in 2013. It was a yeah, Category 5, and it made a direct hit on a city in the Philippines called Tacloban City, and I was there. And the city is at the top of a narrow bay, and when the center passed south of the city, the winds shifted to the southwest, all this water got pushed up to the top of a narrow bay and then it overflowed into the city. And because the storm was very intense and very fast moving, it came up quickly like a tsunami, came in so fast that folks couldn't get out of the way. And they don't know how many died, but it was between six and 10,000 people in the city. And at the height of the storm, I found myself, I was jumping in the water to pull people out. That's how fast it was happening. It was just like, it was just, we were all doing everything we could to get people above the water. It's interesting you said that it was in a small bay because that actually makes sense to me why the storm surge was so bad because you take all of the energy from a, a category five super typhoon and push it into a smaller area that just pushes more and more of that uh, water energy into that area and that's why the storm surge d gave them no warning um, which is a very unfortunate. And what's interesting, yeah, and that's one example, but then of course we've had other examples in the United States where it's the exact opposite, big slow moving storms. And I think one of the examples you have is probably the polar opposite. Yeah, yeah, Hurricane Ike, which was back in 2008, you know, it was interesting. So, you, you know, your average hurricane in the U.S. is about 100 miles across. This was 500 miles across. It filled the entire Gulf of Mexico. But the winds were not as strong. In fact, it was barely a Category 1 storm when it made landfall. Unfortunately, because of the size, it pushed a gigantic storm surge. And so the storm surge got up to 25 feet uh, in areas, and people who thought they were going to evacuate on the Friday in the morning because the storm was going to come Friday night. They weren't able to because the storm surge came in 12 hours ahead of the storm. So it was a polar opposite of high end, but it still had deadly consequences because people were not prepared for it. Yeah, I think it's a really good example. Like every hurricane or typhoon is so different and the dynamics of how the water comes up and how fast it comes up, it's different every time. Hurricanes are like people, each one is completely unique. Yeah, I, I say that every time a storm is coming in, it's like you, I know people want to compare storms, but boy, that is pretty deadly. It, it can be a real problem because every single storm is going to have its own set of circumstances. Now, what's interesting, Josh, is that you're in a location right now that's actually had some of the worst, if not the worst storm surge ever in America. Yeah, I'm in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. This is where I live half the year. And actually, this is the this is where Hurricane Katrina's maximum storm surge occurred. Bay St. Louis and neighboring past Christiane had a storm surge that was pushing 30 feet and it's the highest known storm surge on record in the Western Hemisphere right here, Bay St. Louis and past Christiane, Mississippi. And uh, so obviously storm surge is top of mind here in this part of the country. Well, and, and another reminder for our, our viewers, and we talk about storm surge, it's not just that the, the water goes up to 30 feet, it's violent, it's waves that are crashing, and it's not just this gentle rise and fall, it is, it's a violent, violent situation, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's part, it's not just the water, it's the motion of the water. That's a big part of it. And of course, water's a lot heavier than air, so moving water is pretty destructive. And I always tell people too, it's not just that the water comes on shore, but then it rushes back out. And so whatever it kind of pushes on shore, it, it will pull things out. For example, with the uh, hurricane that hit Galveston in, in 1900, um, part of the problem was most of the victims and things were actually pulled out into the Gulf of Mexico 
and they, that's one of the reasons why they don't know how many people actually passed away. Dr. Jim, I did not know that. That's very, that's, I learned something new today about the Galveston hurricane, the deadliest natural disaster in the history of the United States. And yet, like you said, they don't know how many died. The death toll estimate for that ranges between eight and 12,000. That's a pretty big range because they really don't know what happened. Well, and it changed history because Galveston was going to be the, the hub. It was going to be the big city, kind of like uh, New Orleans or, or something. But instead, it was Houston because after that happened, nobody wanted to rebuild. Wow, that's, it's, it's amazing the way these, these events actually, yeah, like they changed the course of American history. It's incredible stuff. Well, and, as, and unfortunately, in other parts of the world, as, you, as you've seen too, that uh, these these typhoons, which is just another name for a hurricane for us, really do impact millions of people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is it, the, the the impact of these big events just cannot be overstated. And you know, I think like all along the American Gulf Coast and and the East Coast are examples of this. And also, where I grew up on Long Island in New York as well you know these like especially like the 1938 hurricane have just changed the contours of the island and the population yeah it's something we always have to remember so we'll continue to warn people you run from the water you hide from the wind so storm surge is really the biggest killer as always well josh we are out of time for this edition thank you for your insight it's always a pleasure talking with you and everyone be safe for the remainder of this hurricane season